nation. When God speaks here, the balance between God's answers and Job's response is clearly uneven. God speaks for 123 verses, and Job only speaks for nine. In fact, when Job finally does respond to God, he says, I am small, and then he places his hand over his mouth to indicate that he will speak no further. The poets and the authors of Job think the answer to our why questions and our issues with God can be cared for with the power of imagination. That book was very fitting, the children's story. Have you ever walked outside and wondered how fog works? Or wondered how many raindrops fall from the sky? Have you ever wondered what types of animals awake when you awake? Or marveled at the smell of fresh brewed coffee? Our God is an awesome God. Reminds me of that old praise song, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Job's desire after this trial is to be more indifferent. It's not as if Job does not care about his life, but to pray for certain circumstances is something he will no longer do. Instead, he wants to know Yahweh. Ruth Haley Barton says, the prayer of indifference sets aside for what God desires. It's an important prerequisite for the prayer for wisdom precisely because the wisdom of God is the foolishness of the world. It is only after we are indifferent that we can receive wisdom from God. Ignatius of Loyola says, We must make ourselves indifferent to all created things as far as we are allowed free choice and are not under any prohibition. Consequently, as far as we are concerned, we should not prefer health to sickness, riches to poverty, honor to dishonor, a long life to a short one, the same holds for all things. Our one desire and choice should be what is more conductive to the end for which we are created. Job wants to draw nearer and nearer to God, making a larger and larger canvas for his creative imagination and illustrative life. Instead of being bogged down with the impossible why questions, Job now has hope in being part of a life that's larger than his direct line of sight. May we also be encouraged by God's presence to hold space for wonder and imagination of God's love. I'll leave you with a poem I'm not really big on poetry, but sometimes you see one that you can't resist. This one is called Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination.
calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. This time we invite the congregation to give their offerings and tithes. A reminder you can do that online. Uh, they may be sent through the mail to Brother George or you may donate here as uh, Sister Kathleen comes around and uh, collects the offerings in person. If you would sing the doxology with us. bow your head for a moment. Loving God, we continue to live in the world to which we have been called as followers of Jesus Christ. Help us now gratefully offer back our ransoms lives through our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Accept what we've given today and inspire us to offer to you the best of who we are in thanksgiving for our transformed life we've received through the life and death and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus. Help us to be loving servants, even as Jesus has taught and lived. Amen.
Now that we've survived the whirlwind, <laughs> may the knowledge of love and the one who knit the earth together rest with you and give you strength to help others. For the glory of God. Amen.